Welcome to West Coast Wednesday here on Prospectors Radio with Kathleen Biffle, Rich Cooley, Scott Swiftwater Tony, Indiana Gold Hunter, Dennis Dayton, and your host, Tim Grimes. We hope you enjoy the show and thanks again for listening. All right, everybody, welcome back to another West Coast Wednesday here on Prospector Radio. Hope everybody's having a great week so far. I hope two of my co hosts are having a great week so far. Tonight, we got Mr. Rich Cooley with us. How are you, Rich? Pretty good. How's everyone tonight? Doing good. What you been up to, brother? Oh, just uh, waiting on my dredge flutes to get, get back, and hopefully I'll have them back this weekend, and I can proceed to finish my build. Proceed to put her together and then post some pictures? Yep. <laughs> yeah. I, well, it'd be a while for pictures, because I got some other stuff I got to do once I get it back together. Oh, okay. Cool. Well, I got Make sure I get all my fittings on and all the hoses hooked up and everything the way I want it and before I'm done, done. That'll be cool, though. Still looking forward to seeing that bad boy when it's all finished and put together. Oh, yeah, it'll look sweet. Now, did you do anything with, are you changing your matting or anything or your moss? Are you doing anything different there? Oh, yeah, I took all that stuff out and put vortex matting in with uh, new expanded metal. Uh, The old one had expanded metal welded to the riffle set. Mm-hmm. I got rid of that whole riffle set. Installed a new riffle set that I got from uh, Ron. Mm-hmm. He actually had a, uh, what was called a three-stage sluice. He took that, all those riffles out when he put gold hog matting in. He gave me the brand new riffle sets. They were never used. Oh, okay. So actually what I did is took them, uh, decided where I wanted them, and then actually had them welded together and, and pieced up, cut some pieces out of them and, to fit my box. And mm-hmm. I, and I have a new, new wire mesh for underneath. And then I used the old punch plate over and new expanded metal. Got the box reconditioned up, all the holes welded in it. There was like 15 holes on each side of it. I had to get them all welded. So it then is... I got the box all done to crack. Fresh box all redone mm-hmm. and uh, put a new plug in it for up top there. So. And now I'm working on the uh, floats because I had a whole one of the floats, so I got it repaired. Now I'm getting them painted and getting them done. All I got to do now is clean the frame up, make sure the frame's good to go because the motor's already done. Uh-huh. Start piecing it together, and uh, I might check a couple of the pipes there and make sure they're all right. It might. Uh-oh. Lost you guys. Crap. <laughs> or not. Just hook all the hoses up, make sure everything is good to go. And mm-hmm. when it gets close to being time, I'm going to set it outside and block it up and bench test it. So it's basically brand new. Right yeah. Pretty much. I'd say it's a brand new dredge now. Reconditioned dredge. Yep. Brand, brand new, new reconditioned, reconditioned dredge. Pretty cool. Yeah. You know? I. I'm like afraid to you. I'd be afraid to use it. It's so <laughs> nice. Oh no! I'm, I can't it wait. Belongs in a museum. Just let it sit there and float in the water. I, I can't all. wait. Yeah, like and then that. I got a cover for it so I don't get all scratched up when I'm transporting. But other than that, it's going to be used. It's be like when I'm real. And if it boats. gets if it gets battle scars on it, it gets battle oh, scars on it. That's how it is. Yeah, it's going to. I, I hope we can see you use it on the, its maiden voyage. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Well, I probably will, unless I get down to Virginia before that. But true. Hopefully, it'll be about out in Ohio. Hopefully. Mm-hmm. That's we'll cool. bring champagne and christen it. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to christen it. Mm-hmm. And and then name it. Have you named it yet? No. Ah oh, darn! You're gonna have to come up with a name for it because now it's like a yeah. a boat. So you got, you got to name it for luck, Rich. <laughs> so you got. To come yeah, up with I don't know. I don't know. Dennis is stuck on Coolio, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It could be uh, did you name your dredge, Tim? Me? Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> no. I don't think I named mine. Did I? Chad? I don't. I've never I heard you call no, it I don't think I name. Did. I think you should. I think. I you think did Chad think name his? his? No. No, but we did name the no. first one Frankenstein. See? So that one had yeah. a name. Well, mine will probably be the Patriot. Okay, Ooh. see, there it's got a because name. Because I have the Patriot theme. Yes, okay. that's a good one. I'm just going to call mine Sticky because it's got stickers Stick. all over it. <laughs> 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 oh, Sticky. Come here. Get over here. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, mine's sticky. Yours is what's yours? Buffalo the Patriot. Two? And <laughs> Kathleen's is Buffalo Two, and Shad's is Buffalo Three. Right? Oh, he's Buffalo One. Oh, he's Buffalo One. Yours he's Buffalo. He's the two. original Buffalo. Okay, so there we named him. And what are we gonna call him? Patriot. Yep. Dennis, what is he gonna name his? Hmm. Who knows? <laughs> he had a name for it. He but might have. The Green Bandit or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> Porta potty. <laughs> hmm. Probably the Packers or something. I don't the know. Packers. Oh, probably. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Ah, there we go. So now it's official. But yeah, it's all good. I can't wait to get her going. Well, we can't wait to see it, brother. And I want to thank you for being here tonight, as always, in here to no problem. lend a hand and for all your great information, Rich. Thank you, brother. Also joining us tonight, we got our very own Miss Kathleen Biffle. How are you, Kathleen? Doing great. Buffalo (laughs) 2. Buffalo (laughs) 2. I have to get a sticker and put it on there. It says Buffalo 2. I think we have one. Oh, do you? Yeah. Oh, you got to put it on there. But I haven't put it on there. Oh, you have to. Yeah, I will. We're all going to have to get stickers. Maybe it'll be part of uh, Justin Up My Dredge. That's right. (laughs) What about dressing up your dress? Did we come up with some kind of idea for that, Kathleen? Well, in the spirit of celebrating Rich Cooley's revamped dredge, we decided to do a contest. Mm-hmm. And do you want to announce it tonight? Yeah, go ahead. And then oh, me. Then Shad okay, will make up the thing and we'll get it out there as soon as he gets it done. But go ahead and announce it, Kathleen. Well, from now until May 5th, 30, well, Memorial Weekend. I don't know what, exactly the date, yeah, but you're right. <laughs> we're going to run a contest to dress up your dredge. There you go. <laughs> it, I guess it's the 28th. The producer just told me. Oh, it's the 28th? Okay. <laughs> it's the 28th of May. Okay. Well, Sunday, so the 27th. Okay, okay, we'll do it that Sunday, so it's actually the 27th. <laughs> okay. Okay. Anywho, you dress up your dredge or your high banker. Um, could be a high banker as well. Or a trommel. Or any type of equipment that you use to find gold. And then Except for a sure. sluice box, yes. Oh, except, except for, for a sluice box. Yeah, can't use your river sluice. Right. <laughs> um, so post pictures, right? On mm-hmm. the um, are you gonna start a little tab? Yep, yep. Forum as, thing? Yep. When Shad gets the thing made up, we'll we'll start a post for it. To where they can post their pictures right there. On and if post. you have a name for your dredge, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to And then the, the winner will receive mm-hmm. dredge cons, mm-hmm. uh, con, uh, all dredged up from all, all the cronies. Mm-hmm. We'll throw that in. So we'll call them crony cons. <laughs> crony, crony cons. Oh. Crony cons. <laughs> uh-huh. And then an Amra shirt. Mm-hmm. Amra hat. And an Amra hat. Uh huh. And maybe we'll find something else though in there too. Yeah, we're not done yet. No, so we're not done yet. You know how we are. We just like to. <laughs> we just like to get it rolling. And then we'll we like add to surprise to it. you. <laughs> yeah, you never know what we'll yep, get. Yep, then we'll go from there. Yeah. So be watching for that post. That'll be cool. See. Yes, Bob, your your co- combo will count. Yeah. You can dress that up as well. Mm hmm. Yep, that's true. It's a yeah, we bucket. just don't want a single sluice. You know, right. we understand if you're going to have stickers on it, that's not dressing up your, you know, we just don't want a single sluice. We want to see either your, you know, your high bankers, combos, your dredges, your trommels, all that kind of bigger equipment. Because we might do something with the, the smaller equipment later. Yep. So Right. right. Yep. With like maybe pans and sluices and. Yep. We yep. Never know. Get creative. This yeah, is fun. Right, I think. Right. Yeah. So we'll do we'll do this first, and then we might right. do the other stuff later. So you guys won't be out of it. You're right. You'll still be able to get in it. Yep. So have fun with it. You just go crazy. Dress my dredge. <laughs> you don't have to be as extravagant as Rich. <laughs> yeah. But Rich is like the. You could look at that for inspiration, and then go okay. And you could do... It, it's a sample. Yeah. Yep. I made you mine with the Sharpie again. Right. I don't... And I might <laughs> yeah, there you more go. fancier I stickers. <laughs> I wonder if I could get some fancy floats. Oh. I'm sure you could come up with something I can cool. spray paint it gold. Oh, there you could do something crazy. There you go. 
Yeah. I don't know about spray paint, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, you get that cr- that plastic Krylon. Oh yeah, paint. yeah. That'll that's stick right. to it. Yeah, that'll hold. Hmm. So, there's some things that's you could do. Yes. There's some things you can do. Oh yeah, you could put some neon lights on it. You could jazz it up. You know, it could be cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow, that'd be awesome. I, I think this will be fun to 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 judge it. It will be night. Yeah, night dredge lights. That'd yeah. Be cool. So, Ooh, put some now little, we're now we're talking. Some LEDs along the bottom of the floats when it's floating in the water. Yeah. It's got this cool glow. <laughs> See, there's a some ideas. clear sluice box. Oh, see, there's <laughs> some... throwing out too many examples. Yeah, we're giving, guys, we're giving you guys some talk. ideas, right? So this way they can't say, I couldn't think of nothing. Just anything. We do whatever you want. And then take a picture of it and submit it. And we'll judge it. And good luck to everybody. I think it'll be fun. I think yeah, so. Yeah, that'd be cool. Mm-hmm. We always try to come up so with So you've these. got some time, you know, right. to do it. So you can really... You know, take your time with it if you need to. I know I probably need all the time in the yeah. world. <laughs> yeah. It's winter time now in most areas, so you know, yeah. have time to do it. Right. No, I'm, I'm going to try to come up with something for mine, but I just don't know what. But I can't win, but I can still have fun doing yeah. it. <laughs> That's the best yeah, part. I can't win either, but I think I it'll I can't win either, so. But we can I'm have fun of. doing it. That's the key. Just have some fun doing it. And you never know. And you that's um, entries in before May 27th. Mm-hmm. So when, we'll get that post up probably by the weekend, right, Shad? Is that enough time for you, buddy? Yes. Okay. So by the weekend. He's we'll probably get, working on it right now. Probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll get that. He gets a raise. <laughs> it's a raise from nothing. <laughs> from nothing. nothing to nothing more. <laughs> is a heck the of a, more nothing. The more nothing is a heck of a race, Chad. <laughs> man, you're the man, Chad. So what's been going on, Kathleen? Oh, well, you know, just the regular Wednesday things in the Biffle household. Mm-hmm. Just been busy lately, mm-hmm. <laughs> as usual. I see your daughter got her driver's license. She did, Very and then... Cool. Um, we so we have one getting ready to take a test, so we'll have three drivers on the road. Wow! Two, three down, two to go. Three down, two to go. Man. It's like uh, we're running a an assembly line of children <laughs> here. Through, <laughs> they all hit their milestones. Like okay, there's one, two, three, four, uh-huh. five. They get in line. <laughs> Next. Yeah, that's cool though. Congratulations to her. She passed it the first time, right? She did. Way to go. Good job. That's always always neat, but kind of scary at the same time, right? Well, yeah, I was hoping. Uh-oh. <laughs> I think we, we lost we her. We lost her for a second again, Kathleen. It's doing oh, it again. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we are. hear you now. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, let's hope she didn't inherit my bad driving genes. <laughs> oh. So, so far, so good. I'm knocking on wood. It always makes me nervous to have them out there. Mm-hmm. Oh, of course it does. Yeah, you always worry. That's for sure. It, uh, young drivers, a lot of crazies on the road. So, uh, I, I <laughs> and yes, the uh, the sunshine is mocking me. We see that. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, picture of the you called it the Arizona sunset yeah. or something. That's the the Arizona sun. Off in the west, <laughs> as it gets cold here, mm, it's <laughs> mocking you. <laughs> it's only eighty nine. It mocks what is me. It? <laughs> what is it, Scott? Eighty nine. That's awesome. Yeah, it was eighty nine today. Oh. We're about there. Hey, it climbed. What? It started. We started our day off with what sixteen degrees, yeah, and was... then we ended in at fifty. So yeah. that's on one day. That's a good day here. That's yeah. a real good day. And it's 38 degrees right now. Right, so we're we're still doing good. It might rain tomorrow, so if it rains, it's going to be in the 30s, right? So we'll yeah. we'll take it. Yes, I'll take it. <laughs> oh God, yeah, I'll take it over those crappy single digits. So it ain't no 89 like some people we know, but oh, we just <laughs> lost him. <laughs> Did we just lose him yeah, again? We just lost the 89 man. <laughs> So that probably, was swift water. He, he probably who, pushed the wrong button. Who got in the in the in the yeah. Skype? Yeah, got... <laughs> I think Scott needs a jitterbug computer too. 
Oh. We gotta get one for Scott, one for Dennis. Chad got me a new one. It's not a jitterbug, though, right? No. <laughs> uh, well, I think he owed it to me because when we were in California, he dropped mine. Uh huh. And it cracked the screen. It was my surface. Oh. Mm. It's been a while. It's been like a year and a half. I've been working with the cracked screen and my touch screen stopped working and then it started doing some weird things. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> I geez. needed a new one. Man. Well, there. You got a new one then, right? Very excited. So you're, you're all good. What kind do you get you? Um, you got me an HP and that's about all I know. An HP? <laughs> 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 what is this thing? Two in one laptop. It's a two in one laptop, oh, so oh, it'll turn it. It'll turn into a surf, right. like a surface thing, oh, awesome. and then a regular keyboard. Well, that's cool. Nice, very nice. So you did you dredge up your news? I work on my stories. You dredged up your news on that and your stories. My stories. <laughs> uh, yes, I've got um, some good stories tonight, awesome. and a couple fun facts. And I'm working on Sunday's Closer Look. I know, is that Super Bowl Sunday coming up? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so if anybody want, doesn't want to watch foosball, right. <laughs> tune in. I'll do a Closer Look uh, piece on Heck Sunday. yeah. You don't need to watch the foosball. The foosball. It's the devil. Sorry about that, guys. I had some trouble with Skype here. It's the devil, Scott. That's why. Uh, it's I'm starting to think it. You know, I was I was I was home 10 minutes before I was actually come on and it took me 20 minutes to actually get this Skype hooked up. We had to go and go out and re-sign in and all that stuff. I'm like, what is going on? Jitterbug. You need the jitterbug. <laughs> <laughs> it's got that one big huge button that says Skype. You just push it and you're on. <laughs> You got one that says Google, and you're on. <laughs> it's that simple. Jitterbug. Are you there, Scott? See? Jitterbug. Just... I don't know. He must have either. No, hit... I'm here. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get it off mute. <laughs> <laughs> See? There will be ever a big since... button that it... says mute. Well, and... ever since I downloaded that Windows 10 because it's the updates, you have to do it. <laughs> and, it was, and Kathleen, you're, you were right about it. It took like... Uh, what seven hours to Holy get that thing crap. done? Crap! The update, well, man. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. update. Well, wait. Who made you update? Microsoft. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, because my Windows one... Ten did. Oh, if you got Windows Ten, they 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 did an update on Windows Ten. Mm -hmm. oh, no, they went and made me update up to Windows up 10. Up to Windows 10. Oh, yeah. so I didn't have to do that. I got, I'm running Yeah, that eight. one was a long one. Whew. Yeah. Well, I got 10 on this computer, 10 on that one, and 8 on this one. So I am I like the 8 best. I don't like 10. Makes me crazy. Well, it's, they said 10's not. A lot of people, even in the business world, they don't even like 10. So No, nah, I just don't care for it. I don't care for it. Well, Kathleen, thank you for being here tonight. Yep. And looking forward to some dredging up the news here in a bit. All righty. All right. Also joining us tonight, we got our producer, Mr. Shad Biffle. How are you, Shad? <laughs> I'm doing well. Thank you very much, Tim. Across the room. I like to catch Shad off guard when he least yeah. expect it. <laughs> expect it. So what's going on in your world, Chad? What's been happening this week, brother? Anything good? A whole lot of nothing. A whole lot of nothing. It's Wednesday, though. We're halfway through it is. with nothing. And, and it seems like all the nice days lately are when we have to work. Yeah, so they're work fair. days. <laughs> the weekend will it, come. You know and I'm tired of people like, you know, Donald Knox, <laughs> Swift Water, rubbing in their 89-degree <laughs> weather. Oh, yeah. Lucky Arizona. Mm-hmm. Them Arizonans. Arizonians. That just hurts. Is is that what they call them, Chad? Arizonians? Yes. Is that what they are? They they, they rub in them nice, warm, sunny temperatures. <laughs> it's cold. Yes. I can't wait to be one. I know, right? <laughs> It'd be nice. Soon, right? Maybe. Very soon, hopefully. Very cool. Years. So you ex <laughs> you excited about this new cool giveaway? Oh, yeah, I think it's, it'll show some creativity 
Oh, heck you know, yeah. from all the listeners and members. So it's going to be pretty cool and see what they come up with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, now, have you already announced this giveaway yet? We announced it while we was starting the show. We'll tell you in case you didn't hear it. Okay, I missed it. Yeah, we'll <laughs> let you know and see how cool you think it is, too. It's pretty awesome. So Shad will be one of the judges. All you guys are going to be judges, so, you know, be ready to Definitely. be blown away by some of these cool things. <laughs> and then tell Scott what the prize is going to be. The prize is going to be a bag of crony cons from the cronies, from us. Each uh, one of us is going to donate the their cons. A little bit of gold and some dirt. and That's going to be a prize. And then we're going to give away a Amra hat, Amra shirt. And we'll find some other goodies to throw in there as well. Uh, but the, it's our the Dress Up Your Dredge contest. I remember that. I remember, remember that. I remember. Well, right. Well, we went ahead. We're going to do it. And we announced it tonight. Shad's working on the post. We'll get that posted. And then they can start dressing them up and posting their pictures. And for- it's going gonna, it's gonna to be dredge, trommels, and high bankers. Yep. Bigger. We'll do smaller equipment later. Mm-hmm. It'll be pretty cool. Uh, you guys you guys out there in Radio Land and everybody on the Gold Prospector Space, you guys got to kind of excuse me a little bit because... I've been really, really, really busy, and I maybe get maybe a half an hour just to even get on Facebook in the morning. So I've had a lot of people write me messages and stuff like that, and I can't answer them all because I don't have the time anymore because oh. due to running a store. Oh. <laughs> Isn't it fun, Scott? <laughs> well, I thought I'd retire to go gold digging for a reason, and I'm figuring out why now. <laughs> uh-huh. uh-huh. But it's it's worth it in the long run, I guess, you know. Yep, that's what happens. Welcome to our world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, now i got to be an active part of society. Yeah. <laughs> You're a contributor. It's not a fun world. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but we're in it to win it, right? That's all yeah, we can but, say. But that's right. that's going to be a cool contest because I know there's there's some guys out there that's got a lot of skill. Mm-hmm. And Rich is... Rich is Rich set the bar kind of high, he did. so this is gonna yeah. be good. Um, well, none of us can win, but you know we can. I'm we're still gonna. Participate I'm still gonna do it. Fun. <laughs> oh yeah, we're still participating. And even all you Arizonians, you can pimp, or dress up your dry that's washers. That's right, dry washers. Yeah, <laughs> any equipment. That's that right, you dry washer. We forgot to mention that. Yeah, that's a piece. Yeah, of we equipment. got dry washers are good. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I pimp think them. Your uh, combos, dress that dry up. Dry washers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there you go. Them Arizonians, our West Coast people, can dress up that dry washer. <laughs> no doubt. I want, to, I want to give a shout out real quick. Go ahead, brother. Uh, one of the people in our chat room, all the way from Australia, Tasmania, Gold Rush, Australia. He's in the house tonight. Ah, very oh, cool. Uh, very cool Check to him him tune in. Checking out the West Coast. Are they in Australia? Yeah, yeah. We like Australia, man. I got like got quite a few Australian friends on my Facebook, right. and they're, they got, they got some good stories. They do. They got some good stories and some big old gold, <laughs> don't they? Heck yeah! It's yeah. nice having our friends from over in Australia tune in and join us. Not over from the land down under. Down under. So it'd be our friends under. Down under. So. <laughs> I wonder what time it is there now, like 4 in the morning? I think no, they're 12 later. hours it's, away. It's in the future there. They're right. in the future. It's <laughs> tomorrow morning. It's already Thursday there, probably around 2 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon, wow. I'm sure. Really? Something crazy. <laughs> That's cool. So we could just ask them future questions and maybe they can answer. <laughs> <laughs> What's going to happen in four hours? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What we'll the cut with some future type questions to ask them. Yes. <laughs> we'll do that. <laughs> Thank you. You Shaz. know what I find. You know what I find funny is because like a lot of the movies, you know, there's a lot of people out of country that see those movies way before we do, and I think that's that's really wild. Uh huh. Oh yeah, they are. Like, yeah, like all the new movies that the people from across seas they'll see them before we even get them in the theaters. Yeah. That's because they're in the future. Right. It must be. <laughs> Jeez. That's got to be what it is, Shad, because I know, like, China. You're, you're living in the past with mm. water in Arizona. Yeah. I reckon. Yeah. 
And wait, yeah, because Scott's three hours behind us, so he's even in more past than we are. <laughs> We're the future, Scott. We're you. the future for you, Scott. This is your future. If you want to know what happened at 8 o'clock in the evening, I will tell you later on tonight. Right. <laughs> See? So there, we're learning something. But uh, here. did you want to do gold prices? <laughs> yes, sir. Sure do. Go for it. And then I'll introduce Scott. All right, real All right. quick, everybody. Uh, gold is still up at nine dollars at one thousand three hundred and forty-six. Nice. Um, it's kind of dipped down from on Monday, but still nice high price. Silver's gone up nineteen cents to seventeen dollars and thirty cents. Platinum's hanging on, staying above one thousand at one thousand and five dollars, up five dollars. Palladium though Palladium. continues to nosedive really? by twenty seven dollars <laughs> for oh. a closing price at one thousand and thirty one. What's going so on? So it's there? almost getting close to now platinum. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So. <clears throat> I like seeing that silver still making its move. Like the little engine that it could. is, yeah, it is. It really is. <laughs> I think I can. I think a I real can. cheap cheap engine that could it is <laughs> the cheap <laughs> put a double cheap in there <laughs> i like silver <laughs> I but do. don't forget of all our birthdays on gold prospector space scroll down right. on the main page lower right side and you can wish all of our members happy birthday today right. i'm sure and they are dan c gold digging dude <laughs> <laughs> great gaff jack of all trades <laughs> jerry barch Kenneth Lopino, Kevin Atkins, oh, somebody yeah. we've met. Somebody we know. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Phil Olson, Stan Black, Tim Bone, and Victor Perez. Happy birthday, everyone. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Happy Pretty birthday. Cool. Man, thank well, you. Well, if Dennis was here, he would sing Happy Birthday to you like Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, he would, but, <laughs> but darn, he's not here, so. <laughs> but maybe I'll share the links to the uh, Happy Birthday song he did for one of the other members, oh, John Miller. Yeah. Oh, there you go. And uh, they can at least have him sing Happy Birthday. That's right. You guys, you guys need a button that you could go on that you could just type in what you want to say and then send it to everybody at one shot. <laughs> Wait, we got that button. <laughs> Do you? Yeah. You just post on your main wall. Yeah. Okay, guys. I was thinking I haven't found it. I was like, oh, I've seen a couple oh, no. lists. I'm like, oh, I'm not no, getting into this. I doll. have that button. Woo. I have that button. Only me. <laughs> or I oh. can send everybody something at one time. You know what I mean? For right. like a broadcast message, I can send it to everybody at one click. Boom. And all of our members would get it. <laughs> <laughs> button it's like that'd dude, be funny it's what the birthday song <laughs> mm-hmm. like people who don't even expect it all of a sudden get a happy birthday from Dennis. happy birthday song from Dennis <laughs> well would... i see everyone's asking too where's dennis so yeah yeah he's having some uh i guess their whole area in the town city that he lives in the, his uh internet there's a severe outage right now so yeah, he's he's, bummed. he's not on tonight. He's bummed. You know, it's like it. If it can happen, it's going to happen. It's either Skype or computer problems. So he will. It's not... been funny like that because it hasn't been. I mean, we we didn't have any problems till I'm thinking like four weeks ago it started that. Mm-hmm. that. Right, Kathleen's been having weird Skype issues. Yeah. You know, yeah, and and even even this one tonight had is cut off a couple times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we thought it we, we had it licked there. Thought so if I just disappear while doing the news, right? She'll be back. She'll keep talking because she ain't gonna know. <laughs> and we'll be going. Can you, Kathleen? <laughs> and all of a sudden, she'll be back like magic. Very cool. Thank you, Shad. <laughs> also joining us tonight, we got our West Coast connection. Mr. Scott Swiftwater, Tony, how are you, Scott? Doing pretty good, sitting here in short sleeves. I know it sucks oh, for all you guys back and there. <laughs> I, know you, I know you hate to hear it, but, uh, you know, eventually, what's really funny is because it's warm right now. Mm-hmm. I, don't know, I don't know if we're going to have a spring or it's just going to jump into, hey, here I am, you know. Mm-hmm. It, it, has, it has done that before. It's went from uh, cool weather into just into 100 degrees, right, just like within a week, bam. Oh, wait, if it's 89 now, what's spring temperatures like? Well, this is spring temperatures. Oh, that's spring temperatures, the 89. Yeah, but we're too early for spring. Mm-hmm. 
So I don't know if it's going to do one of those funny jumps. You know, you never can tell the way the jet stream and all that stuff brings the weather to us from uh, down south Mexico and up by California. You know, it's either down or up. Right. But we'll, we're just I'm just waiting to see what's happening. We still have no water that I know of. You know, I haven't heard anybody talking about it, boasting about it. I haven't heard uh, my buddy Ben saying anything about it. So no water still. I, I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. We just ain't getting what we had, man, two seasons ago. It was prime. And we, I ain't seeing anything like that, not even in the future. You know, they, We're talking two weeks of weather like this in the high 70s and, eight, and low 80s. Hmm. Wow. Well, that's awesome temperatures. <clears throat> I mean, 70s, 80s, man. Yeah, perfect. but that could also backfire because, you know, when we have the uh, – what they call the monsoon season, mm-hmm. that, you know, that can hammer you pretty good if we got those warm temperatures, you know, they build and uh, thrive on the warmth like that. So, and this, you know, Phoenix will get flooded when you get some good, you know, four inch, three inch, four inch rains, it, it'll flood the, the roads and everything's a mess, you know, stops traffic for miles. Right. And, oh yeah, it's, it's ungodly sometimes, you know, you're just stuck. You got to wait for the water to drain out. That's crazy well hopefully you get a little just enough water to where you can get in there and do something and maybe you'll find a little time to get back in to, to do a little mining right well you know i'd like to do that and you know i the only day i'm taking off right now is sunday mm-hmm. <clears throat> just because like i said i'm working this new store and we want to really get it going so i'm putting the the mileage and the hours into it instead of my gold season but uh yeah i'm just like i said i'm not i didn't want to dry wash this year folks i mean i i like to dry wash it's just where i dry wash and how we do it it was really hard on the shoulders and the elbows and it you know i'm not 25 anymore so i I really didn't want to break anything down so i i couldn't do my job anywhere else so like i said we're gonna we're gonna have fun doing this keep my mind set on the on the main goal and then in the summer you know, I might take off and do some uh, dredging somewhere else or uh, maybe go back east in the summer and, and do the same thing. I don't know yet. I'm nice. tossing a coin around. I'm just going to go where life throws me, so to speak. Right. <laughs> well, maybe you can plan a trip to uh, Ohio or yeah. Indiana. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's a, that's that always a good cool. uh, good thing to do as well. Come down and do some I hear there's gold there. Dredging with uh, us. Yeah. Uh-huh. That would be fun. All of us get together. Yeah, they said there's a little bit of gold there, right? A little bit. Just a little. A little pinch. Just a little. A little pinch here I, and there. I would have to I'd have to bring my three inch though, not my six, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Scott, well, I got you here. I got a question for you. Yeah. Okay. Before we get to Kathleen's news. Somebody sent sent me a question this this week and uh I'm gonna read it to you and since you're our West Coast connection, maybe you can answer this, okay? All right. All right. The question was from Nick. <clears throat> I'm going to spell the last name. I don't know how to pronounce it. P S A L T I S. How's how's that pronounced? Saltis? Is it P silent? I have no idea. Saltis? <laughs> Nick Pasaltis, maybe? Pasaltis. Oh. <laughs> That's what I'm <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to. I, you know, I butcher everybody's name. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody knows we're just we're we horrible. Just don't pronounce the yeah. words correctly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, that I don't know how she would pronounce it. Pasaltis, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe the P is silent. And maybe it's just, and it's just saltus. Yeah, Nick Saltus. So here's the question, Scott. Maybe you can okay. answer this question for him. Okay, he's like. I have been doing a lot of research, and I am just curious. It says, if you did find the Lost Dutchman Mine in the Superstitions Mountains, you can't touch it. Is this true? <laughs> because it's on, you know, they said something about it, uh, uh, about being on federal <laughs> land and stuff like that. Uh well, I reckon if I ever did find that mine, number one, I'm not going to go tell anybody. I'm going to go claim it. Mm-hmm. But and once I once I claim it, it, it's mine. But that's what he's <laughs> saying. You can't claim it, right? There's, well, who's, there's who's to prove that that's that mine? Right. Who's to prove where you? Maybe found someone's already found where it. You found yeah, it. At. You know, I still think, and this is just my belief. I don't believe there was a mine. I believe he found a Spanish cache, and I still believe that. 
Mm -hmm. You know, nobody's ever found the mine. He said there's enough timbers over the mine that a a horse train could drive across of it. So that's not a cave. That's going to be a hole that he found. You know, Mm -hmm. just certain things that was said. I think he found a Spanish cache. But I, they, you know, they don't want to ruin the the allure of the lost Dutchman's gold either. Mm-hmm. And I can, mean, go ahead. I was going to say, and can you <clears throat> stake claims up in the Superstition Mountains? I know there's claims up there. There are claims I, up there. Huh? Yeah, there's okay. there's claims up there. Hmm. Okay. Now I don't know if there's a certain part that they won't let you claim on. Right. Uh, I mean, it's the Superstition Mountains, but I know that I've been back. As a matter of fact, that uh, what that little video that I started, the little puffer, or yeah, the the puff the magic dry washer. Mm-hmm. That's in, that's in the Superstition Mountains. I was back in the Superstition Mountains, and I had to find a place that I seen that didn't have claim markers. Oh, okay. So yeah, there's claims there. All right. Well, hopefully that this will help then. So, you know, you there's definitely claims there. And if you find that treasure, don't say nothing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think if, if it was ever proven, like, his name or something was scratched on the wall, that would be kind of a big evidence giver, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, they It might be under some historical factors that you'd probably have to go through. But, you know, like I said, I would myself, I'd probably claim it or get it out of there before anybody knew it, what was happening, you know. Yeah, I mean. And that's just that's just me. Right. Oh, no, so, I'm... I'm sorry, say I'm bad, but if I found it, I'm not saying nothing. <laughs> Gold does some crazy things to people. <laughs> well, yeah, and that's true. I mean, look at those the, the treasures they find, find off seas. And they're like, oh, yeah, we made them. And all of a sudden, there's Spain going, oh, we want that back. Right, like, what? yeah. So, somebody always <laughs> Funny you up. should say that. I've got a story about something oh, like good. that. That'll be good. See, we're totally psychic. I'm telling you. you I know. Are. I'm telling you, you guys are. That's weird. But. It's I, I mean that's just the you know we're we're gold miners and gold diggers mm-hmm. and gold prospectors. If and if you you know if you're a prospector you go out looking for it. If you find it, I mean, come on. How many years you spent prospecting? There's mm-hmm. your payday. Yeah. And you know what? If anybody hits just one in their lifetime, they've did a good job. Yeah. Just one. Yeah. I know if I found it, I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> Finders keepers. That's right. <laughs> Don't know who the losers are, so we left. <laughs> losers, weepers. They left it a long time ago. <clears throat> so, but yeah, that'd be the only way to answer okay. his questions. And I think that they would probably say maybe historical value, and they, you know, they don't want to take the lure out of the mountains. But other than that, uh, pretty much, I haven't heard anything like that. I would, I would snag it up and just run. Okay, cool, good. Yeah, he sent me that question during the week, and I told him I'd, I'd ask you on <clears throat> West Coast Wednesdays and. Because you are our guy in the in the dirt out there, so <laughs> you would know. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like I said, I know there's claims back there. I've been in the Superstition Mountains, and as far as you know, as far as I drive back, I I see claim markers. So cool. So it definitely, there's claims there. Don't mean there's any available, but there's claims there, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now I tell you, those <clears throat> the the feller, and I can't remember their name, and I'm pretty, I can't believe I can't remember their name. <laughs> it's it's like a snowball hitting me in the head. Um, the Feldman? The guys, the guys that did the, the Looking for the Lost Dutchman show. Yeah, the Feldmans. Yeah, now they, can go, they go back and, and, uh, and, and find gold back in there. So they know, you know where gold is and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. as far as me, I went back there a couple times, and I just feel like I've always been in the wrong place because I've never really found an amount that's going to – I'm like, woohoo, you know, I want to stay here. I it just – it's kind of funny, but I know they find pretty good gold back there. I've heard and seen pictures. So, mm-hmm. and actually, their dad founded an organization out there, Heat, for uh, treasure finders who look for artifacts and you know hidden treasure. So he, they may know the rules, the oh, real yeah. rules. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's what's Heat stand for, Kathleen? Do Historical. Oh, and that's about all I got. Okay. <laughs> Treasure yeah. at the end. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Heat. I I have a, I I just don't have it on the tip of my tongue. You can Google it. Okay. You can Google it. <laughs> <laughs> How many times are we gonna Google something tonight? Cool. <laughs> he gotta love the Google. <clears throat> gotta love the Google machine and the jitterbug. <laughs> <laughs> Tanya, they're gonna come out with it's a, a jitterbug computer one of these days. Mm-hmm. They will. 
They will. They will. Just like the phone. And I have the jitterbug computer. Yes, sir. Well, Scott, thank you for being here, my friend. And thank you for answering that question for Nick. And you know we dig it. <laughs> heck yeah. And on that note, I want to hear some news. So here's Kathleen. It is time for Dredging Up the News with Kathleen Biffle. Mining news from around the globe. Metal detecting, dredging, entertainment news, and fun facts as well. Here's Kathleen. All right, everyone. Uh, it is actually January 31st. Ooh. We are still in January, <laughs> for crying out loud. <laughs> Will it ever end? <laughs> Tomorrow is Groundhog Day, right? Oh, it is? I think so, but every day is Groundhog Day for me. <laughs> is it really seriously Groundhog Day tomorrow? It's Friday. Friday. Oh, it's Friday. Friday. Okay. Pretty uh, sure Friday. Gonna... It's either first or the second. I, I never know. Mm-hmm. It's Friday. Second must be. Okay. Thank you, Rich. Is our Pennsylvania man. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, I'm going to kind of flip flop things tonight. I'm going to start out with some global news. All right. I'm just going to change it up because I don't want to have Groundhog's Day. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, police have arrested six people connected in an elaborate plot to smuggle gold into Japan, and this is to avoid paying taxes. Mm -hmm. Six suspects were taken into custody after five gold bars worth about 22 million yen. That's about $200,000 for us. Um, they discovered these five gold bars under a panel in the back of a toilet in an airplane bathroom. Hey. <laughs> so, evidently, the scheme had a lot, um, a couple parts to it. One man brought the gold bars onto a Japan Airlines flight in Taiwan that was heading to Japan. Okay. So, it is believed that he hid the gold bars in the plane bathroom. Well, that same Japan Airlines plane was scheduled to be used for a domestic trip to Tokyo's Haneda Airport from the Chibu Airport. So, another member of the group boarded the plane when it landed at the Chibu Airport, and that's where he would retrieve the gold bars and then carry them off the plane in Tokyo. Okay. (laughs) So, um... That obviously they wanted to avoid customs because they didn't want to pay taxes. Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Passengers on domestic flights don't have to go through customs, and they get out of paying the uh, 1.82 million yen, which is sixteen thousand dollars in taxes. Oh wow! But they didn't get away. <laughs> obviously, uh, custom customs officers discovered the gold bars in the toilet before the plane took off. For Tokyo. Yeah. The six involved in hatching and carrying out the plan were taken into custody, all except for the person on the domestic flight who wasn't charged. The ringleader is thought to be Mohammed Rafiki Muhammad Renzani. Yep. Well, that's a long name. Ah, yeah, don't <laughs> I'm and evidently he's from Sri Lanka and he lives <laughs> in Japan. Yeah. Now, wow. yeah. yeah. And the police are just really nervous now because they, they think that they've only scratched the surface. Uh, that this could be part of an even larger gold smuggling could be. scam. Oh. Or scheme, whatever. Plot <laughs> thickens. Isn't that crazy? Yes, it is. And how much was the taxes? 16000 They would have had to pay $16,000 in taxes. Wow. Hmm. Well, those are just idiots. <laughs> I, just, I would have just paid it. Yeah, I mean, with right. that amount, Now they're in jail. Why not I mean, now, the like tax? the gold prices are... Gold. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know they they seized that, so pay the taxes, and voila, done. You get your follow the rules. I don't wonder where it. the gold bars are now. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't know. Mm, More to come. Play. More to come. Somebody's house. <laughs> <laughs> Use them for a footstool. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> oh, I know. yeah. Mm. All right. Uh, last week, Pope Francis uh, he visited Madre de de Dios which is an area in the Peruvian Amazon. He met with the indigenous people and the ch- all the children in the area to address the environmental problem that is occurring there due to a modern-day gold rush of illegal mining. Uh, they're saying that illegal mining contributes to the increased mercury contamination in the area. 
The global community is listening to the Pope's call for action. The Spring Global Environment Facility, that's GEF, will begin to uh, tackle some of the root causes of the harm, uh, of, of all the harm going on, while still trying to promote a development uh, potential still in these countries for, for the gold. Mm -hmm. The countries that are going to be reviewed are Peru, and I didn't even know this one was a country, Burkina Faso? Never heard of it. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Colombia, mm -hmm. uh, Guyana, mm -hmm. Indonesia, Kenya, Magnolia, and the Mong <laughs> Mongolia. <laughs> Not the flower. <laughs> and the Philippines. Those are the countries that will be um, taking part in this program. Hmm. Oh. All right. So, those, that have you ever seen where those, they've mined like that, though? Like, I know what two guys can do, but can you imagine 50 guys? Yeah. Side by, yeah. I mean, it's, and they're, they're probably not taking any precautions right. or anything like that. Oh, so. yeah, because they just get paid on what they bring in. Mm hmm So they're digging like, <laughs> yeah, they're digging like they're, they want to eat. Mm hmm mm hmm Sure. Yeah, they, if they need food, they go out and dig for gold and. Yeah, but, but th they could demolish a place, though. I've seen pictures. I'm like, holy mackerel, you know, and they're like, oh, that was all done by hand. I'm like, holy mackerel. <laughs> Crazy. Yes, it is. So um, hopefully they come to a compromise, you know. I mean, mining it is a, people's livelihoods, but it should be done properly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, so that brings us back to the stateside news. Okay. Uh, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency uh, reversed itself on Friday by maintaining restrictions on the proposed pebble, copper, and gold mine in southwest Alaska's Bristol Bay. Um, they said that they needed more time to assess the project's impact to the environment and the area fisheries. Mm -hmm. Last July, new EPA head... Pruitt began a process to withdraw the restrictions, but on Friday, Pruitt said he was suspending that process. Um, he's quoted by saying, It is my judgment at this time that any mining projects in the region likely pose a risk to the abundant natural resources that exist there. Oh. Also on Monday, First Quantum Minerals, which is a potential partner on the Pebble Mine, um, their shares closed at 2.5% lower because of uh, the pressure that they're getting to withdraw from this deal because of what happened last week. Mm. Um, the EPA administer Scott Pruitt said also on Friday that the move would not derail the Pebble Mines permit application process, however, uh, but it may be the first sign that the, this path, uh, this project's plan path to be completed may not be as smooth as they thought it was going to be under the Trump administration. Right. So, uh, more to come on more that. More to come on that, I'm sure. Well, yeah, well, I think the, the next plan of a action um, when they're doing the permitting process is that the mine, they're, they're studying maybe a smaller mine design mm -hmm. than before. Um, so, maybe that will make a difference. I don't know. <laughs> it, it does change it. It does change the yeah. difference on how much tonnage you, you actually do move a day. Okay. So if they went from big and they said, "Oh, we're only going to make a hole this big now," yeah, that could change. That would probably change a lot. Oh, okay. okay. All right. That well, maybe sense. they'll come to a compromise. Maybe we shall see. Because I, why like can't I we said, all just get along? Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, I think out here, if you got anything that, like any machinery that moves over five yards a day, you, it's under. You got to have plant operation and un, and all that good stuff. Hmm. Okay. I believe. You believe. I believe. <laughs> Very interesting. I've, I've never got lucky enough to find a backhoe down on my claim, so. <laughs> right, so you're all right. <clears throat> no worries. All right. Uh, Twin Falls, Idaho. And I think we talked a little bit about this on Sunday, but it, it was just a quick blurb. I don't know if any of you saw the article that Shannon Poe posted in Amra, and I think Tim shared it to our official um, Facebook page. It was about the Ohio, Idaho State Department of Agriculture um, are actually working on a plan to remove a, nox, a noxious weed. Mm -hmm. 
That's what they were calling it in the article. <laughs> it's some kind of invasive aquatic plant. It's called hydrilla. Um, evidently, this plant can fill entire waterways and kill native plants in the systems by forming a dense mat in the water. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the <laughs> the what they're planning on using is hand removal or a suction dredge. And then they had a picture in the article of somebody standing there with a two inch pro line dredge. Mm-hmm. Gold dredge. So <laughs> Yeah. Which is still, Go figure. So ironic. Yeah. <laughs> a, t- a two inch to clean out those no, that's not gonna work. <laughs> it's just weird they're using a dredge, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. That's the weird you know, part. That, that's a lot of seaweed. That'll like wouldn't that clog you know, <sighs> something. <I> would, <laughs> probably <laughs> Well if you if you used a, a, a suction nozzle you could get away with it, and all you had to do is blow it back through a screen mm-hmm. in, a, in a trailer, and the water will come out. So, I mean, what, that would work, but it's just what of... they were saying was is they used a nozzle to suck the plants and the roots out, supposedly. Yeah, yeah. Is, is what they said. Yeah, yeah, it's just ironic, though. Yeah, if they, I mean, if they were shooting it, if they were shooting it into a, like a fence racked in trailer, the water would come out. They just collect all the weeds. Mm-hmm. It'll be curious to see how they do it. Yeah, <laughs> to see. I mean, because I, evidently, if they if you break it apart, more could spread. Oh, yeah, it's one of those like oh, you don't like even need mute, roots kind of like, thing. Yeah, it's like a mutant <laughs> plant. It's like if you break it, it multiplies. Yeah, oh, I'm like, basically looking at it right now, and it basically <laughs> it shows the guy there in the picture with the moss and stuff laying up on the. On some kind of bridge or something embankment, mm. so he's picking the weeds and stuff out of the dredge and then putting it up on there while the guy's sucking it up. Oh, okay. oh. gotcha. In the, in the picture, anyway. Got it. Boy, that guy tending boxes working his butt off. He's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. got a good pile of weeds in there. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Kind of like string algae. In yeah, my yeah. koi pond right now. <laughs> um, it's winter, and for some reason, we have string algae <laughs> just going nuts. Strange. It, it, it blooms in the in the winter. That's <laughs> weird, figure. too. Yeah. You're going to put your dredge in there, Kathleen. Clean I know. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's how you do it these then days. The neighbors would really, really uh, be wondering what we're doing over here. Yeah. <laughs> In suburbia. <laughs> oh, boy. I could, just, I could just herald they're losing it, I'm telling you. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> now look what those biffles are doing. <laughs> Call the HOA. <laughs> oh, boy. So, um, this one is a, a follow-up to a story that, you know, we, we seem to, to like to visit because it's really interesting. Um, but this one... Sad news, the remains of a treasure hunter who vanished in June, um, searching for $2 million in buried gold, as we know as um, Forrest Finn's treasure. Uh Um, The remains have been identified. It is 31-year-old Eric Ashby of Colorado Springs. He was presumed to have drowned in in the river um, last June. (laughs) Excuse me. A month later, uh, they found his body downstream. And last week, a local coroner announced that the body had been posi- positively identified as Ashby through uh, using DNA. The, his, Ashby's friends said he died searching for Forrest Finn's hidden treasure. On the day of the accident, Ashby and four others went out specifically to retrieve the treasure because... Ashby believed he knew where it was buried. Oh, wow. So the three others in the raft also fell into the river, but they made it out safely um, while Ashby was swept away in the current. Mm. So, you know, we reported on this before. Mm -hmm. Like, two others died recently. Well, one last year, 2016. Well, no, not last year. 2016, 50-year-old Randy Bellia of Broomfield. Mm -hmm. He disappeared in New Mexico while he was hunting for that treasure. Um, and they found his remains months later. Man. 
And then last June, when we talked about this treasure, Paris Wallace, uh, the 52-year-old pastor from Grand Junction, disappeared while searching for the treasure, also in New Mexico. His body was found a days later. And then a week later, um, Ashby would disappear. Mm-hmm. So, Man. For- Forrest Finn, though, in Santa Fe, New Mexico, he's been asked to call off the search. Mm-hmm. But he hasn't done yet. Uh, done that yet. I guess he said that, you know, he receives over 200 emails urging him not to call off the hunt, and he only received two that said he should. So as of now, the 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 search for the treasure hasn't been called off. The, However, the two guys that uh, Ashby was with, um, they actually saw him hanging on a rock, and they didn't... They said that they panicked and they left without trying to help or calling the authorities. Oh, really? We've never wow. seen that in a movie. <laughs> yeah, right? That's um, <laughs> They weren't notified for more than a week, evidently. What? Um, in the Ashby family, they're now pushing for a duty to report law in Colorado, um, hoping that this would make it a requirement for anyone to call 911 if someone is in trouble. Oh, wait a minute. Now, I'm thinking somebody <laughs> got lost. If you see somebody hanging on a rock, you're, you're going to wait a week to call somebody? <laughs> yeah, they said they panicked. I, panic. And it just so happened to be his other two uh, companions, right? That's think, kind yeah. of weird. Choose your treasure hunting partners wisely. Yeah, yeah. so who knows? Maybe they I, do have the treasure already. And they're maybe. Not hmm. they, yeah, we both panicked. <laughs> Why did you panic? Well, because we pushed him off the side of the cliff and he actually <laughs> caught the rock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <boy>. That's wrong. <laughs> oh, I mean, my it's God. sad, but, you know, if you're going to go look for treasure, great. You know, I, I think that's really exciting, and yeah. if I had the time to do it in the funds, I would I would be out doing it as well. I would do, yep. But mm-hmm. just be careful. Yeah, and don't leave nobody hanging on a rock for a week before no. you report it. Call no. immediately. No. No. Help a guy yeah, out. He, he won't be hanging there, trust me. No, I mean, that's craziness. I, I don't care if you panic or not. I mean, a week? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's not right. That, that's something's fishy there. It's... You know. Yeah, I think I think there might be something there. I you know, there maybe is. I'll be uh, yeah, talking about. Yeah, you never know <laughs> what story might come from this. You hey, know? Ka- Kathleen Tasmania, Gold Rush, Australia wants to know: Did the survivors get the treasure? Does it say anything about that? It didn't say anything. I'm thinking if they did get the treasure, they probably kept it a secret. Yeah, that's why. why they yeah. The week. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking they probably did. Um, because then that would give a motive if if it wasn't an accident. You know what I mean? So why get yeah. the why put suspicion on yourself? Yeah, I, mean, I know, right? I don't know. It sure seems awful fishy. Yeah. yeah. So uh, on that note, though, I that kind of gave me an idea. Well, it did give me an idea for tonight's fun facts. Oh, okay, cool. We had a couple of them. All right. So in the spirit of modern day treasure hunting, uh, that uh, here are a couple stories. One is recent. Um, that. This uh, is a story of lost treasure, and they're kind of crazy tales. Okay. But the first one, uh, in the Philippines last year, treasure hunters claimed that they had uncovered the masses of gold reportedly hidden in the Philippines by Japanese soldiers during World War II. Mm -hmm. It's rumored that the gold bars and the gemstones were worth tens of billions of dollars, and the, this was loot that the Japanese Imperial Army had stashed in more than 145 underground tunnels and caves in the Philippines. And this was before they surrendered in 1945. So Japanese soldiers were under the command of General Tomoyuki Yamashita. I think I did it you right. You did that one good. <laughs> and the treasure is for, referred to as Yamashita Treasure. Uh-huh. It has a long rumored past. You know, many many Filipino Filipinos um, are very aware of this legend, and you know, small communities have been torn apart by the treasure mm-hmm. intrigues. Um, you know, suspicions are growing into jealous accusations against the alleged disco- discovery of the treasure. So, you know, wow. there's been some crazy things going on with with people there, <laughs> there with that treasure. Um, 
I guess according to legend, the the legend going right now, there's really no evidence that the treasure ever ever existed, but it's enough to keep everyone intrigued. Mm-hmm. Um, in a released video, this was just last year, about a year ago, explorers were shown wiping away mud bars, uh, mud from gold bars, and this was shared on a social media site. Yeah. <laughs> but anthropologists still insist that the Yamashita treasure is actually a myth made up by locals to boost morale. So, Hmm. yeah, so there's another story behind that, too. Uh, Evidently, the treasure is involved in a lawsuit filed in a Hawaiian state court in 1988, and this involved a Filipino, another Filipino treasure hunter named Rogelo Roxas. And no, I'm sorry, Rogelio Rogas. Okay. <laughs> and the for- it was also um, involved him and the f- former Philippine president, Ferdinand Marcos. So in 1971, Rogas claimed he and his group located an enclosed chamber on the state's land near um, Bagui City. Mm-hmm. That And he found bayonets, samurai swords, um skeletal remains dressed in, in Japanese military uniform. Mm-hmm. They, they also found a three foot high gold Buddha statue and a lot of crates filled with gold bullion. He said uh, he took the golden Buddha in one crate with about 24 gold bars and he hid them in his home. Mm-hmm. He claimed he resealed the ch- chamber for safekeeping until he could arrange the removal of the rest of it. It was soon after this that Rokas claimed that President Ferdinand Marcos learned of his discovery and ordered him to be arrested and beaten, and he took the golden Buddha and all the gold that he had hidden in his house. Huh. In 1996... Did, I go out or did you guys go out? Where did you? I go Where out? No, you didn't. No. I can still hear you. Okay. In 1996, the Rokas estate Uh-oh. and the golden Buddha Corporation received what was then the largest judgment ever awarded in history 22 billion dollars which uh, now she went 40.5 bill oh you're back can you guys you're back can you hear me now yep <laughs> my goodness <laughs> so let's see what did you hear you're, you're good you only cut out. cut out for a second you oh, guys okay. I'm going in and out okay all right, so with interest, it's going to increase to $40.5 billion. What was that? I don't know, Scott. <laughs> okay, all right. Sorry. Anywho, um, so that that was the story of the, the Yamashita treasure. But they're saying it didn't exist, but yet this guy's saying he found it. Right. You so, guys are going in and out, if you can hear me. We hear you. <laughs> I'm Where are in you? In outer space? <laughs> Come on. I'm going in and out. <laughs> <laughs> I have to laugh. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right. Well, if you can hear me, I'm just going to advance to I the next you. story. Think... Okay. Okay. Story. Story. <laughs> Hang on a second. <laughs> Does Scott not realize we're on the air? <laughs> Hang on I, a minute. I don't know. <laughs> you keep I going. don't know. You can keep going. I, I, wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> All righty. So this one is a recent story. And this is actually another, uh, it kind of tied in with what I wanted to do anyway with the fun facts. This uh, happened in Santa Ana, California. More than 50 million worth of gold bars, coins, and gold dust that's been described as the greatest lost treasure in U.S. history. It is about to make its public debut in California after sitting at the bottom of the ocean for more than 150 years. Yeah. The wreckage contained 21 tons of gold. It consisted of 3,100 gold coins, 45 gold bars, and more than 80 pounds of gold dust. Oh. It was discovered in 1988, 8,000 feet below the surface. Uh-huh. It was the wreckage of the U- the SS Central America. It sank 160 miles off 
the Carolina coast, and it sank on September 12th, 1857. And this was during the height of the California gold rush when it sailed um, into a hurricane. It departed from San Francisco to Panama. It was then sent by rail to the Central American um, nation's east coast and finally loaded onto the steamship bound for New York. And it had it was carrying also 580 passengers uh, approximately 580 passengers mm -hmm. and so originally launched in 1852 the ship was called the ss george law and it was a um, the ship was in continuous service on the atlantic leg of the panama route between new york and san francisco mm -hmm. um the treasure goes on display at the long beach convention center in the south of los angeles Evidently, the gold is for sale, so really? you can purchase some. A tiny coin alone uh, could go for $1 million oh, because fuck. of the history of this uh, wow. wreckage. Wow. And It'll be on display February 22nd to the 24th at the Long Beach Convention Center. That'd be cool to see. Wouldn't it? It would. That'd be something neat to see. Oh, yeah. I mean... And when did... Yeah. Now, they... Found it when, Kathleen? Did you say 88? Uh, yeah. A, a guy find it, found it in 88, in 88. and that's kind of where the story continues. Um, so because a... there is an interesting story behind that guy. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and I remember hearing something about it, um, but I didn't. It, it didn't click until now that, you know, so it was related. Like, still, that's like 30 years. I know. The, the treasure hunter who found the treasure? Uh-huh. Um, he's actually sitting in Ohio, in Ohio in an Ohio jail. What? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is in jail here in Ohio. No way. Yes. So um, the reason why he's in jail, it was because of the incidents that happened after he recovered the treasure from the wreckage. His name is Thomas G. Thompson. So Tommy Thompson. Oh right? wait! <laughs> wow. <laughs> He's a research scientist from Defiance, Ohio. He discovered the ship's location um, in 1987. Okay. He found the 280-foot ship off the North Carolina coast, um, but it was too deep for humans to dive, so he had to raise some funds, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He got 161 uh, investors to fund approximately $13 million for his search. Uh, Thompson brought up more than $40 million in gold from the wooden hulled sidewell steamship. After the first batch of gold, a group of American and British companies that had insured the ship's cargo for more than a century ago um, claimed rights to that treasure. So in 1993, after a lengthy lawsuit, Thompson's company, uh, Columbus America Discovery Group, and the insurers agreed to divide the recovered treasure. Mm -hmm. However, the story goes on. Okay. Uh, Thompson's company sold 532 gold bars and thousands of coins to the California Gold Marketing Group for $50 million. Mm -hmm. In 2000, two years later, Thompson was slapped with a new lawsuit. This was for $2 million. Um, this time, by some of his investors who said that they had never received the returns they were promised. In 2012, Thompson missed his hearing, and that's when he became a fugitive of justice. <laughs> they okay. found him in uh, Palm Beach County, Florida, in a hotel room in the year 2015. So he was held in contempt. Um, he refused to answer questions about the rest of the gold. Oh. He's been in jail ever since. Um and then when the U.S. Marshals searched his mansion, they found bank receipts as well as a book titled How to Live Your Life Invisible. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't work. <laughs> yeah. And then um, I guess one of the pages was marked Live Your Life on a Cash-Only Basis. So that's what they found in his <laughs> mansion. <sighs> yeah. So he's not. He's still not. He's still not saying anything. He basically says that. Well, you know what? Um, all the coins were turned over to a trust in Belize, and the rest um, of the money went towards legal fees. Wow. 
Wow. And loans to the bank, evidently. That's just crazy. And I don't know how long he was sentenced. I guess yeah. I didn't look that part up or didn't Maybe really it care. Maybe long. <laughs> it might not be long because he doesn't seem too worried. It's like, yeah. I no, know. I think he, he knows that when he gets out, he's just going to be really rich. Yeah, right. It's like. But I don't know because I think they did win that suit. Uh, last year, the Odyssey Marine Explorate exploration which is a florida based deep ocean exploration company mm -hmm. they began diving for the shipwreck on behalf of, of the plaintiffs oh. of lawsuits so oh, okay uh, diver, divers and archaeologists have now recovered more than 15,500 gold and silver coins and 45 gold bars from the wreck site wow uh, they've also found jewelry gold nuggets and a little bit of artifacts from the 19th century life, from glass containers to chewing tobacco still in its package. Oh, that's cool. Yes. <laughs> so the wreck lies, you know, too deep for humans. So that's uh -huh. why they're using the, you know, those big heavy mach machineries. Right. Things. Right. But you can find more about this intriguing story. Um, there is a best-selling book out there uh, entitled Ship of Gold. Um, I'm sorry, Ship of Gold in the Deep Blue Sea. And it's a history and discovery of the world's richest shipwreck. Okay. okay. So you can get that. Um, it's written by Gary Kinder. Hmm. I'll check that out. I thought that was kind of interesting. And it, it tied in with Forrest Finn's treasure. and It did. Tied in with all the treasure stuff. All that stuff. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Pretty cool. I think we lost Scott again, so... <laughs> Did we? Yeah, I don't know what happened. He was there, and, and poof, and he was gone again. Okay, let's see. Uh-oh, his internet's out. Oh, jeez. I wonder what's going on. I don't know. He said... We got Dennis's internet? It's a conspiracy. <laughs> if yours I goes out, so. Kathleen, <laughs> then something's up here. Let's see. It says... Yeah, I'm still here. Rich so. is still here. Your internet's good. It says... I'll tell you, he said, uh, okay, internet out, tell everyone he's sorry, and next week he will talk about walking a claim for the first time. Okay? Walking a claim. Walking oh, a claim cool. for the first time. So that's next week on in the gold field with Swiftwater. Yeah. That's like when you uh, get a claim and you're walking around to Yeah, I guess to... Where it is. Yeah, maybe, maybe when you, yeah, when you first get it and it's like, hmm, I'm going to walk it out and see what I got here. I don't know. <laughs> Since we don't have a claim, I, I don't know, Kathleen. Hmm. I know. I guess we'll find out next Wednesday. Cool. Sounds like a good deal. Yeah, pretty cool. Are, is that all your, your news and that, fun facts? That was dredging up the news. Oh, darn. I hate for it to be over. <laughs> <laughs> well, on Sunday, if you tune in. I'll do a um, a, co a closer look piece. I haven't decided exactly what. Which one? To do. <laughs> okay. Well, no, that's cool because everybody, nobody will know then. So it'll be. Yeah, it's a secret. Keep everybody. I don't know how much of an audience we'll have. It is Super Bowl Sunday. The foosball. The foosball. Well, if they don't want to watch the foosball, they can come here, hang out with us. Sure. Because <laughs> we'll Same be Same time as usual, seven thirty right. Eastern. That's right. And that is, what is it, 7.30 Eastern, 5.30 Mountain, and then 4.30 Pacific. Really thinking that one hard, aren't you? I, well, you know, I use my brain all day. My head hurts. I'm glad you did it because I couldn't do it. It's like, what? I get confused at dang time zone stuff. It's like, be here because you don't want to watch the foosball. You'd rather be here with us. I don't out. even know who's playing. I don't either. See, I don't. I don't know. Uh, I'm sure there. I'm sure there'll be. There's people out there who who know. And but. you know what? I think Sunday we're gonna mm. give up. Remember that 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 handle up kid I told you guys about Sunday? Oh yeah. We're gonna give one away Sunday night. So no way. Yeah way. <laughs> we sure are. So. Oh, that's neat. Pretty cool. So, got to be here. Can't be watching the foosball. You got to be here. You know, I got to see this thing in action, too, because if it's that easy, it, it makes it that easy. Mm -hmm. All know, it is is I, a handle. All it is is a handle yeah. that bolts to your motor, so you can pick the motor up and carry it wherever yeah, it's you cool. want. It's nice. It, it, to make it easy to carry, right? It's easy to carry, yeah. Yep. Mm. 
Instead hmm. of picking it well, up. Well, maybe that, that I'm gonna have to rethink my whole reason why I got a two inch dredge now. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yep. They need to come up with some kind of dang strap system for ours, Kathleen. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't like how. Um, I don't like bungee these, straps. These bungees. Yeah. Yes, I don't like those. They need to come up with something for that. I told you. Mm-hmm. Yes, and I may do that when I dress up my dredge. Oh yeah. Yep. Put all on it. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's right. You said all thread. Yep. The yeah. shoes all thread. And Just wrap it right around the tank and. Paint it up. up. Through, mm-hmm. Lock horses and nuts on it, and that would do it. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the. That's what. That All was. right. Did you hear that, Shad? I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> Not that hard to do, Wimpy. <laughs> Just gotta fit it in my schedule. Yeah, it's hectic schedule. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. But I, I went ahead and posted the uh, dress my dredge banner. Did you? On the main page. All right. Cool. Details cool. coming soon. All right. Well, that is. You, awesome. you gotta look at the dredge. I, I just <laughs> oh my dressed gosh. up. Wait a minute. That's pretty. That's gotta, pretty awesome. I gotta go look at this now. Hold on. I'm oh, you gotta see this. I think you would. In, I think you would appreciate it since you're a car person. <laughs> oh, really? You're missing the rims on the tires. <laughs> no, oh, rims. they're blackout. Oh. Oh. Let's see. Yeah. To look at it then. I can't look at it now on my phone, so I'll look at it then. <laughs> That's cool, Chad. That's like a dredge you can drive around. It's the RC dredge. <laughs> the RC dredge. I Remote like that. Control. <laughs> that is cool. I think you should invent something like that. <laughs> that is... Oh, I like that. See there, guys? Go to the main page and check that out. That is awesome. So, dress your dredge. I give that a big like, Shad. Good job. <laughs> so, there you go. It is posted. And they can actually put the picture right there. That's the entry spot. What do you think? Mm-hmm. So, I think so. That's Yep, just post the pictures good. right there. That's perfect. Good job, Shad. Man, busy bee. <laughs> Look, he just whipped that up. He just did. Like, that oh, was like quick and easy. That means he wasn't paying attention to my news. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> I heard every word he said. <laughs> He actually did help me find a couple stories. Good job. Great job with the news. That's teamwork. That is. That is definitely teamwork. You guys killed it again. And I appreciate it. I know our listeners appreciate it. It was awesome. Thank you, Kathleen and Chad. Great job, guys. And uh, don't forget, check out our Instagram account. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on our Facebook pages, the official Gold Prospector Space Prospector Radio page. And we got Prospector Radio and we got Gold Prospector Space on Facebook. We got three different ones. Uh, what am I forgetting on that note? Uh, is that all of them, Kathy? Um, all right, YouTube, YouTube YouTube page. Don't forget, subscribe there. Follow us on now, YouTube. Now, is anybody using our Instagram account? We got a couple followers. Okay, there. what do you do? I don't. I I'm just, I need jitterbug Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know it's a phone thing, as far as I know. Uh, you put the app in your phone and type in Prospector Radio, and that'll bring you to our Instagram page. And we got a few followers. Yeah, okay. On Instagram. We got a few. What do you do on Instagram? Post pictures. That's oh. It. That's it. So I just, just like Facebook. Put, yeah, but, but you don't not. put stuff. You just put a picture and hashtag, I guess. So I just but put. Sometimes you, so you can't do like clever things and when you post it? No. Or is that what the hashtag is? I think that's your hashtag thing, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I really do. I think that's all it is because I just posted like some of our pictures from the Vegas show and stuff like that. Just Prospector Radio pictures <clears throat> is all I posted. So oh, okay. they can see that there. And uh, I think I posted the picture when we did the thing at the nursing home. A couple pictures of that. Oh. Uh, so it's stuff like that. And then when we get more pictures, new ones, I'll, I'll just add them there as well. I, I, I could start using that, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I guess if you took pictures when we was out, you'd just yeah. put them on our Instagram page. I guess. Okay. As far as I know. 
<laughs> we'll figure it out. And then we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. And don't forget our YouTube page. Come on over there, subscribe, check out our videos. And you can also listen to previous episodes of the show there as well if you missed any. Or you can check out all of our archives on Spreaker or TuneIn or iTunes. And don't forget to download our apps for your phones for your I, I feel like I should be taking notes. I know, right? <laughs> There's a lot. We got a lot Yeah, going, Mr. Producer. We got a lot going on out there. You can get the Well app. don't forget, we got some giveaways uh next Sunday we'll be announcing the winner of the Gold Hog Flow Pan for oh, the right. GPS giveaway on the giveaway tab. That's right. Just click it, follow the instructions and you'll be entered in and tune in next Sunday and then uh don't we have our Cronies Club giveaway coming up, too, in a couple weeks, right? Yeah, I think, yep. well, that one might be two weeks, right, for the Cronies yep. Club? Now, on our giveaway one, though, she had our monthly one. Mm-hmm. Now, wait a minute, let me verify. Yeah, they they have to be listening to the show. Oh, so you got to enter in. Right. It's really simple. Only it's only a few key words, but go to the giveaway tab on goldprospectorspace.com, dot com. Mm-hmm. Follow the instructions and be sure to tune in next Sunday. Yes, at seven thirty p.m. Eastern time. Yes, and maybe you'll have a brand new flow. That's pan. right, because this one here we threw that little catch in there that you have to be listening. We call your name one minute thirty seconds to answer. We're calling another name, you know, from the entry. So. Be sure you're listening, because if your name gets called and you're not and you wasn't paying attention, my my, shame shame, know your name, you didn't win. Yep. It has to be in the chat That's room right. too. That's not right. everyone's freaker. <laughs> That's right. So, oh, we're no, we're making them call in for this one. Oh, they're gonna call yeah, in. Yeah, they have okay. to call. If we call your name, they have to call, or they can answer in the chat room. We'll give them either option. I don't care. We'll give them either one. But this way. They must be listening to the show that yep. for that giveaway. So good luck to everybody that entered, and I hope you're here listening. So that'll be just a little twist we threw on that giveaway. We've never done that, yep. but we figured, well, let's do a little twist this time. So make sure you're here. So, yeah, a lot, a lot of things, a lot of places to listen to the show, listen to the archives, get the apps for your phones. It's free. Uh, check us out on Instagram, Facebook. Twitter, whatever. I think we're on everything nowadays. I'm... I think so. <laughs> I, I'm going to have to write all this stuff down now, too. <laughs> if we're not there, let us know. We'll get there. That's where we're at. We, we want to make sure we cover everything and we're out there. That way you guys can always find us if you want to listen to past shows or live shows. We're there for you. So, uh, Tune now... into some past shows. We've had some... Um... Some educational pieces, too. Oh, gosh, yeah. We've got Cooley's Corner on Sundays. Mm-hmm. Yep, and then Kathleen's News on Wednesday and Swiftwater. I don't know how educational my news is. <laughs> no, I think it's very educational. I learn a lot from that. I learn a lot from Cooley's Corner, too, every Sunday. You know? And then I'm going to learn about walking a claim next Wednesday. So I learn a lot from you guys. It's awesome. Very, very educational and fun at the same time. We always try to be entertaining as well as uh, educational, I guess. It would be. And we have shenanigans. <laughs> yeah, a lot of that going on. <laughs> always a lot of shenanigans. Definitely. Hmm. So on that note, you, we got anything else, guys? I think that pretty much wraps yep, us up for it. Wednesday. Another great yep, Wednesday. That's about it. All right. So everybody be sure to tune in Sunday night. I want to thank you all for tuning in. Thank Kathleen, Shad, Rich, and Scott for being here. Dennis, we missed you tonight. Hopefully Dennis will be back Sunday as well. And on that note, good night, everybody. Good night. night. Be sure to tune in next Sunday at 730 for another great show. For updates and more info, please go to www.prospectorsradio.com.